we enjoy the choir tonight. Amen. 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 We thank God, amen, for this wonderful time. Amen. And I believe that when we come to service, amen. all the services and everything leads up to one thing, and that's Holy listening amen. to the word of God. Amen. But it's the word of God whereby we receive amen. our instructions. Oh, yeah. It's the word of God whereby we be encouraged. Mm -hmm. It's the word of God that gives us strength. Amen. Oh, yes. Amen. To go on. Amen. And to see oh, what the end is going to be. Oh, yes. We're so honored and we're so glad to see each and every one of you that are here today. We know that some of you have had a trying week. Amen. Some of us have had some challenging weeks. But God has blessed us to be here one more time. One more time. Amen. And I don't know about you, but I'm glad to be here. Oh, yes. And the song said, I'm glad to be in the number. Oh, yes. One more time. Yes. Oh, yes. Amen. And so we are just thank God for each and every one of you that are here. Amen. We're so glad, amen, to see all of my guests, amen, that are here. Brother Crockett, I know your name ain't Crockett, but it's good to see you, man. Amen. Amen. I, I get the names pretty soon. Amen. It's so good to see you. So good to see Sister Amy here with the mom and dad. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. I, I got your message there, Sister. Amen. I thank God for you. Thank God for you. Amen. Amen. Sister uh, R.T., I want to let you know that daddy was on my mind this morning. Amen. Amen. I want to thank God, amen, for uh, Olive Grove for my road, amen, that you got for me. I don't know if I ever said that or not. Sometimes, Pastor, y'all charge things to my head, but not to my heart. Amen. I want to thank God for my roads and also thank God for the donation, amen, of my, my father in Christ, amen, the donation of, uh, amen, my road, amen. And so I, I, I had him on my mind this morning, so I said, well, let me put him on this morning. Amen. Amen. So I just thank God for you. Amen. 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 If I have not told you lately that I love you, Amen. Pastor, I want to let, let you know right now, I love you with all my heart, Amen. with all my soul, and with all my might. My heart desire, Amen, that all of us make it to heaven, Amen, Amen. with one another. Amen. And we not only can worship and praise God here, but we can worship and praise God. Up there, amen. Amen. about 
going back to the basics. Mm -hmm. And if you want to be uh, successful in life, sometimes you just got, well, all the time, you have to do first things first. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? If you want to build a house, you have to first build the foundation. Yes. You cannot put up no walls and no roof without a foundation. And I believe that's the way it is in the natural. And it's the same way in the spiritual. You have to first build a foundation. If we want to be successful in the kingdom of God, you must build a spiritual foundation. And for these past couple of weeks, we've been speaking on a series concerning about the things that we need to know. Our first time we spoke, I believe we spoke on the subject is knowing it's important for us to know who your father is. There you go. To know who your father is. And a subtopic we use as, do you know who your daddy is? Amen. And so we've been ministering on that. And I want to let you know, brothers and sisters, since we've been doing that, I've come to let you know that the enemy is going to fight you with everything he can. Because he don't mind you coming to church, but he don't want you to get the word of God. Amen, amen. And, and so we so said not only Wednesday night, but every other time that when we're ministering the word of God, you're going to get more sleepier than you ever had before. Your stomach is going to start growling because you're going to start getting hungry. You're going to start watching your watch and say, Lord, I'll be glad when Rail get through because I'm hungry. The devil is going to fight you. If he cannot stop you from coming to church, once you get here, he's going to stop you from listening to the word of God. Because it's the word that helps you to be victorious in life. Shouting is going on, but you need the word. Singing is good, but you need the word. It's the word of God that will help you to be victorious in your life. It helps you in your family. It helps you with your relationship. It helps you with your husband and your wife. It helps you in dealing with your kids. It helps you on your job. When you don't really, when you don't really want to hear that boss talking mess to you, the word of God will help you right there. Hello, somebody. It helps you with your attitude. Hello. It helps you with your behavior. Thank you, Lord Jesus. The Word of God will help us, but it won't help us if we don't know it. Amen. 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 So we've been talking about knowing who your daddy is, and then the second thing we start talking about is that not only do you need to know who your father is, you need to know who you are. Amen. That's why, listen, and I say this, and I'm saying it lovely, and I say it honestly, listen, if you don't know who you're, if you don't know who you are in Christ, you will do what everybody else does. Amen. You will act the way everybody else act. Amen. Amen. You, you will succumb to the pressure that's around you. Amen. If you don't know who you are. Amen. And we did a demonstration about the Lion King. Amen. And how many of you remember that? Amen. When he finally realized who he was, he stopped hanging around certain folks. Oh, yeah. Amen. You stop acting a certain way. Oh, yeah. You stop saying, that's the way our family is. Amen. Hello, somebody. Amen. My whole family act that way. Well, baby, you need to be born again. Amen. 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 Hello, somebody. Amen. So we talk about knowing who your father is. We talk about knowing who you are. I want you to turn with me to the book of Ephesians, the sixth chapter. We're going right into the message because I believe God wants something to say. Has something to say to us today. Amen. Amen. In Ephesians, the sixth chapter. Ephesians, the sixth chapter. Hallelujah. And pastor don't want to preach it, but I want to just minister the word of God. Is that all right? Amen. Amen. I don't want to just get a shout and dance and then go back out doing the same thing. But you need to know something. The word of God said in Hosea 6 and uh, uh, 4 and 6, it says that my people perish for the lack of knowledge. Amen. The God don't mind, I mean, the enemy don't mind you coming here as long as you don't learn nothing. And listen, if you keep going over the same thing in life over and over again, that means you, you haven't got the lesson. Hello. Instead of going to the third grade, you're still in the first grade. You can get mad. Well, you haven't learned how to deal with first grade yet. All your friends going on the third grade. Sometimes it takes a repeating in order for us to get it. How many of y'all didn't get the lesson the first time? Let me stick my leg up. 
too. Sometimes I didn't get the lesson the first time. I didn't get it the second time. Sometimes it takes three or four times, amen. But boy, but once you get it, look at your neighbor and say, I got it now. Oh, yes, I do. I got it now. My, my, you keep going back over and over and over the same thing. My God, the woman said down there in Louisiana, ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> Hello, somebody. Amen. See, not only you can learn from your mistakes, you can learn from other people's mistakes. If it don't work for them, guess what? It's not going to work for you. Wrong is still wrong, and right is still right. There's no gray areas. Little black lie, little white lie, ain't no little black, big black, all lies. Lies are just lies. Hello, somebody. Amen. Oh, you there? Yeah. Amen. Praise God. In Ephesians, the 6th chapter, the 11th and the 12th verse. Are you there? Say amen. 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 The Word of God says, Put on the whole armor of God, uh -huh. that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against what? Flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places, in high places. Listen, while you're there, yes, Lord, can I be led of the Holy Spirit this morning? Amen. Turn with me also to 2 Corinthians, the 10th chapter. Yes, Lord, 2 Corinthians, the 10th chapter. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians, the 10th chapter, the 3rd and the 4th verse. It reads, while you're there, it reads, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our, what, warfare are not, what, carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. May God have a blessing to the reader and the hearer of this word. Amen. We want to speak this morning on a subject about you know who your father is, you know who you are, now you need to realize you need to know who the real enemy is. Amen. Look at somebody and ask them and say, do you know, do you know who, the who the real enemy is? I want to just minister this tonight. I don't want to hoop and holler, but I want to keep the Bibles out because we're going to be going to the Scriptures. But the Word tells us, the tough subject is letting us know that we need to know who the real enemy is. Amen. And I want to let you know that the real enemy of your life is not your mother-in-law. It's not your father-in-law. The real enemy is not your husband. Amen. Brother Jackson, it's not your wife. Amen. The real enemy is not your children. It's not your grandchildren. Amen. Your real enemy is not the boss that's on the job. Amen. But the real enemy is the devil. Amen. Many of us don't realize that we are all in a war. Amen. There is a war that's going on. Amen. It's not only in the flesh, but it's also it's in the, the spirit. Amen. But even though the real war, we see the war fleshly wise or with our eyes in the natural, but the real war of our life is in the spirit. Amen. Are y'all hear me today? Amen. It's in the spirit. We're going to try to move on here. But the real war is in the spirit, but it's manifesting itself in the natural. A lot of things that's happening in this world have already taken place in the spirit. But you just can't see it. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying here? So there is a war that's taking place right now. For the word tells us, for we war not for, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. Amen. For though we war within our bodies, the real war is not in our bodies. Amen. But the real war is in the spirit. Oh, Sometimes we wonder why things are not working right. It's because we are fighting a war and we don't know who our enemy is. Oh, yes. We are fighting one way, but the enemy is someone else. Oh, yes. Or it's something else. Amen. You wonder why we have hell going on in our homes. We wonder why we have so much killing. We wonder why we have home so much uh, 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 sexuality that's going on. The real war is manifesting itself in the natural, but the real war is in the spirit. Amen. And what's happening, we're trying to fight in the natural. 
we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare, they are not current. They are not fleshly. But they are spiritual weapons. Sometimes we be going in depression, we don't like ourselves. The devil's putting all kind of stuff in your mind. And you wonder why you're so depressed. And because you're depressed, you want everybody else to be depressed. You don't never have a good day. You ain't never feeling good. The devil is putting stuff on you. And you're wondering what's wrong with you. Baby, it's not the pills. It's the Word of God. Take the pills and the Word of God to make you start feeling better. To make you start looking better. The devil is putting all kind of pressure up on us. And we don't know what's going on. Kids cutting up, can't pay bills, bills running all over the place. We try to stop, stop one thing and then something else break out. What's going on? There's a problem going on in the spirit. So this is not a shout message this morning. And listen, it's not only that, but there's something and someone that's behind it, and it is the devil. Come on, say the devil. Calling this other people problems, this other people faults, but listen, it's the devil, it's the enemy. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Turn with me, let's go. We want to get to the script. Turn with me to Revelation 12 and 9. We call him the devil, but listen, he has a whole lot of names. I say he has a whole lot of names. Amen. And we want to go to see what the devil, what, what the Lord called him, what names he is. Amen. I want you to get there. Listen, get your pen and paper. Out, amen. And make sure, amen, we have notes, paper out there for you. Let's write these things down. Hallelujah. In Revelation, the 12th chapter, and beginning at the 7th verse, the word says that there was a war in heaven. How many of you know there's a war in heaven? If there's a war in heaven, there's also a war down here. If you haven't realized it, listen, there are things that's going on here that have never happened before. Never before have you seen mothers against fathers and Fathers against sons and mothers killing their own children. You've never seen that before. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? There is a real war going on and many of us are asleep. And we think that things are just happening just to be happening. But there is a war that's taking place. The scripture lets us know that there was a war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought against his angels. Now listen, if the devil and the dragons fought against the angels of God, what do you think about you? They're fighting against you. They're fighting against your family. They're fighting against your loved ones. They're fighting my God help me, Holy Ghost. They're fighting against your finances. They're fighting with your mind. They're fighting with everything you have. If they fought against the angels, they're going to fight against you. They said that they fought against the they fought against his angels and prevailed not. Neither was their place found anymore in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out. If you know the great dragon was cast out, my God, he we can cast him out of our situation. Are y'all hear what I'm saying? There are some things that you got to do that God won't do. He have already given you the power. To cast him out. I say he has already given you the power to make things right. Are y'all hear what I'm saying? When the devil could not find any other place, look what happened. He had to come out from there. And the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent called the devil. Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. 
Oh my God. Are y'all hear what I'm saying? The devil has blinded their eyes to the truth. People rather believe a lie. Oh, y'all may help me. See, things that used to be right is wrong now. Things that used to be wrong a long time ago. Look at somebody and say, they done flip the script. And that's what devil have done. He have come in and he have changed the things of God into a lie and it make you believe that the lies is the truth. If you don't know what the word of God says, if you have not studied the word of God, you will believe anything that everybody tells you. You believe what the government tells you. You believe what the governors have told you. But the devil is a liar. Look at somebody say, the devil is a liar. Come on, say it again, the devil is a liar. The scripture calls him that he is the accuser of the brother. In other words, he accuses you. See, when the Lord, if you ever slip through the Lord's hands, slip through the devil's hand, and the Lord saved you, the Lord has forgiven you from all of your sins, the devil will turn around and make you start talking about it and say, you're not saved because look what you used to do. Look how you used to live. Look at all of that mess that's in your life. Look at all that stuff you used to do. The devil will always remind you of your past, but you can say that I thank God that I'm in Christ Jesus now. I've been born again. I've been washed in the blood of the Lamb. I no longer have that past, but I have a future that's ahead of me. And I'm going to let you know my future is bright. My future is bright. You need to know who the devil is. Some of us, we used to live for a father that used to kill us. We used to live for a father that used to lie to us. We used to live for a father that wants us to do us harm, that wants to destroy us. But now we have changed fathers. I no longer look and live for the father that tried to kill me, but I live for the father that tried to lift me up. I live for the father that put running in my feet. I live for the father that put clapping in my hands. I live for the father who has forgiven me for all of my sins. The Father that loves me. And you know what? The reason I live for the Lord now, not because I'm, I don't want to go to hell, but because He loved me so. Boy, when you know that your daddy loves you, you can leap over buildings. But the devil hates you. Listen, he was so hated, God gave him the right foot of fellowship. The Bible said that he kicked him out of hell. And when he kicked him out of heaven, listen, the scripture tells us in, uh, in uh, Luke 10 and 18, it says, listen, he, Jesus said, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. And it made the devil mad. Why? Because the devil wanted to be just like God. But y'all hear what I said? We're talking about you need to know who the real enemy is. See, sometimes we get mad at our loved one, get mad at other folks. It's not them, it's the devil that sent them. Amen. Some of y'all will get that after a while. Yeah. We're being depressed how other feet treat us. Listen, you need to start praying for the devil that's in there. Folks ain't acting right. Start praying for the spirit that's behind you. But y'all hear what I'm saying? My God, I'm trying to almost be through here. But listen, some of y'all, when, when God saw, his name was Lucifer. The devil used to have a name. His name was Lucifer. Everyone say Lucifer. Lucifer. His name was Lucifer. And when God saw what he was trying to do, see, Lucifer was the worship and praise leader in heaven. If anybody knew how to worship and praise the Lord, it was Lucifer. Out of Lucifer came pipes and hymns and organs. And he was the one that led the choir. Made God feel like he was God. Made God feel like he was somebody. If anybody 
to Isaiah 14 chapter. My huh, God. Isaiah 14. Let's look and see what happened here. Satan got kicked out of heaven. Isaiah 14. Listen to what the word of God says. Right Isaiah 14. My God. Where's our Bible prophets here today? My God, my God. Isaiah 14 and the 12th verse. I want you to read it for yourself. Hallelujah. Isaiah, the 14th chapter. And the 12th through the 14th verse. My God. Get your word out. Get your word out. We're talking about knowing who the real enemy is. If you're there, say amen. amen. Listen to what it says. It says, How art thou fallen from heaven? O who? Lucifer. Lucifer means son of the morning. It means the angel of light. It means the one that show up and show out before anybody see anything. He's the son of the morning. He's the bright and the... They call him the morning star. That's what he tried to be. But he said, Oh, how art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning. How art thou cut down to the ground? which did weaken the nations. For thou hast said in thy heart. Listen to what God said. Listen, that's why I want to let you know. Before you even say anything, God knows your heart. Amen. Amen. God knows what you're thinking. God knows what you're going to say before you even say it. Amen. Satan, Lucifer couldn't even get it out of his mouth before God saw pride in his heart. And when he saw that, the Bible said he kicked him out of heaven. Amen. Are y'all still with me here? Amen. We're going to get to some leaping and shouting pretty soon. But you have to know who the real enemy is. Amen. He says, listen. He <laughs> says, uh, this is what he said. For thou hast said in thy heart, verse 13. Listen to what he said. I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will what? Listen, that's what the devil wants to do right now. He wants to be like the Most High. That's why he's messing with you. That's why he's confronting your mind. That's why he's confusing your mind. Because he wants you to serve him and not the Lord. But the devil is alive. Everything that Jesus has done for me, I'm not going to turn around now. I thank God for the white blood of Jesus Christ that is my soul. Thank God for dying on the cross for me. Not only dying, but raising up on the third day just for me.
with one another. When somebody falls down, we go over and lift him up. We don't talk about one another. We don't put other folks, we don't put people business out there in the street. Listen, that's the work of the devil and not of the saints of God. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? My God, listen, when one falls down, the other saints of God, we go and lift him up. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? That's how we know that we love one another. The word tells us in 1 John 4, it says, listen, if one says that we love God and we hate our brother, we make ourselves a liar. And he said that the truth is not in us. How in the world can you love a God that you cannot see and then hate your brother that you see every day? I'm almost through, y'all. I'm not mad. I'm just trying to go somewhere with it. We say one thing with our mouth, but we do another thing with our actions. Yes. Well, y'all hear what I'm saying? Yes. If you love me, you will demonstrate your love. The Bible said, for God so loved the world that he gave. When you love somebody, you give. Amen. And you know what? Sometimes when you love somebody, sometimes you have to give folks tough love. Amen. Hello, somebody. We don't want to hear that. All love ain't peaches and cream. Sometimes love is telling you where you are. Sometimes love is telling you just where to get off. Hello, somebody. Sometimes love is telling you about how you really are, telling you about your attitude, telling you about your behavior, and you know she's right, you know she's right, and if you can't say amen, you need to just sit there and say, oh. <laughs> See, love is telling That's the way God has put up. God is not going to bite his tongue over our lives the way we live. He's going to call wrong, wrong, and right, right. No tipping to the truth. No. It's either you're right or you're wrong. Come on, say you're right or you're wrong. You want to live right? I don't want to hear that part. But I'm almost through, y'all. Pastor, I love you so much because I want you to be true. I want you to know who the real enemy is. I want you to know it's not your friend. It's not the one that talked about you and all of a sudden you and this so-and-so don't talk no more. Or you and brother so-and-so don't talk no more. It's not them. It's the enemy that's behind them. It's the spirit that's behind them. It's the people that you work with. It's the spirit that's behind them. Kids, you're going to school. That girl don't like you because you think you some. It's not her. It's the spirit that's behind that little girl. It's the spirit that's behind that little boy. And we need to recognize who the real enemy is. We're trying to fight. She say one more thing to me. I'm going to knock her up. Baby, God don't want you to fight in your natural. Yeah. <laughs> it's a spiritual warfare. Are yeah. y'all hearing what I'm saying? I'm yeah. y'all. Oh, yes. <sighs> Listen, when we come to the spirit of God, God has a plan. God has a plan. Yes, Lord. God has a plan. And this is his plan. He said, listen, repeat after me. Say, God. Come on, say, love leads. Love leads. Faith follows. Faith follows. But fear of forces. Fear of forces. Somebody wants to know that, needs to know that. Whenever God is doing something, my God, listen, the love of God is what's going to lead you. Because you see the love. You can tell the difference when people love you or not. Amen. Hello, somebody. You can tell them how they look at you. Amen. Yeah, I love you. <laughs> Baby, it's something about your eyes. Okay. You, may whatever, you may say one thing out of your mouth, but your eyes say something else. Amen. And y'all know us, as being black folks, we can show look at somebody. <laughs> Oh. 
Jesus. Already 
start. Jesus is soon to get. If you don't hear nothing else, I'll say, please listen to what I'm trying to say. It has already started. I was just sent this just a few days ago. I was just sent this. And they were saying, Pastor, you've got to look at this. Because the mark of the beast is already here. They've, they've been setting up for the past 20 some years. Now it's just beginning. And I want to let you know that if you are not saved, and if you have not accepted Jesus as your personal Savior, Jesus is going to come and leave you here, and you're going to be stuck here. And you're going to have to go through the tribulation period. Please listen to Pastor what I'm saying. I'm not trying to hoop and holler, but I'm trying to get it clear to you just how close we are. You wonder why things are happening the way they are. They've already told us in Matthew 24 and 25 that there are going to be wars and rulers of wars, nations against nations, kingdom against kingdom. That's happening right now. And Pastor, how do you know why you're saying all of this? I was just sent this. And we was talking about the mark of the beast. Come on, say Mark of the Beast. Mark of the Beast. The Mark of the Beast is this. It's when the government shall take over. And you will not have your identity to yourself. They will know where you are at all times. Right now, this world is going into convulsions because right now, people are stealing people's identity. Y'all better hear me. Y'all know what happened to Target's up there just a few months ago during Christmas time. You hear what happened to Kmart. You hear what happened to uh, 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 Neiman Marcus. People's IDs have been stolen. And right now, they're trying to see what can we do to make sure that your identity will not be stolen. We are people that are on Social Security. Can't get Social Security because people have stolen their Social Security number. Y'all better hear Pastor what I'm saying. I'm not just talking this morning. I'm not mad, but listen. I want to make sure that people here at Olive Grove, that when Jesus comes, we'll be ready to go back with him. So they're trying, they're trying to see what can they do, Brother Boise, to make sure that nobody ID will be stolen from them. And this is what was just sent to me just the other day. My God. And I said, God, I've got to do this. I've got to preach this. And everything didn't come up. But it says this. It said that there's going to be a mark that comes up on every person in this world. And they call that the New World Order. Where everybody would be up under the same thing. And what they're going to do, that mark is either going to be a number by the name of 666, which is the number of men. It's going to either be in your hand, it's going to either be in your thumb, or it's going to be in your forehead. And right now, I have a son, I have a son-in-law, my, uh, uh, my, my daughter's husband. He's a veterinarian, and they have already started putting chips in dogs. So when dogs get lost, or when they go somewhere, they can just pull it up on, on, on the computer, and they can locate them where they are. And now they said they've done it to dogs. Now they're going to do it to humans. Hello, somebody. And when you get that mark, you can begin to buy things. You can sell things. You can buy gas. You can buy perfume. You can buy anything because nobody can steal your identity. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Boy, please, don't go to sleep on me now. Listen. So they're trying to say, what can we do? It says, now, if it works for dogs and animals, we can work for human beings. And I was just sent this just the other day. Starting, it says, all Americans microchipped in 2017. 2017. Microchipped. In 2017. But if I can pull it up, I can't pull it up here. But it says, not only that, but earlier than that, European babies, listen to me, God, I've got five minutes. European babies are beginning to be microchipped starting in May 2014. Y'all better hear what I'm saying. The mark of the beast is up 
upon us right now. And the word of God said when we see these things and hear these things, we need to stand in the holy place. In other words, you need to get your life in order because Jesus is soon to come. When you see these things all around you, stand in the holy place. Get your life together. Because some of us, the Bible said the last day, two is going to be sleeping in the bed. One is going to be taken and the other one is going to stay there. Another one is going to be in the field. Two are going to be in the field. One is going to be taken and one is going to be, is going to be left there. My question is, are you the one that's going to be left behind? There's a movie called Left Behind. Right. <clears throat> Sister Jackson, give me Revelation 13. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. The Lord said, if you take this chip, you'll be able to buy things. But if you don't take this chip, the scripture says, you will be killed. Mm -hmm. oh, God. Revelation is the 13th chapter. I want you all, everybody to get that. And we're closing with this. God is not playing today. Because I believe God is trying to tell us something. I say, I believe God is trying to tell us something. Amen. We're playing around. It's time out to stop playing church. It's time to be real. Look, somebody says, time to be real. Time to be real. Fine. The way I said it, but Revelations, Revelations 13. Yes, hold it. I'm so glad, amen, when I first came into this church, one brother told me, one of the brothers, when they told me when I first got here, they said, Pastor, we just want you to be led by the Spirit. Amen. Thank God for the Spirit of God. Amen. Pastor Johnson loves you so much, but I love you that I don't want to see nobody go to hell. Amen. It's time to quit playing in church. Amen. It's time to be real. Amen. If we're not real with God, it's time to get it right right now. Amen. <clears throat> Listen to what he says. Uh, in verse 13, 13 chapter. Come on, Sister Jackson, read for me. Beginning at uh, verse 13. Uh, yes. And he does great wonders. So that he make his fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of man. Okay, he's talking about the false prophets that's coming up on the earth, doing miracles and stuff and make you think that he's of God, but he's not. He's of the enemy. Amen. Political leaders, those that's in office right now, that's shifting and doing, moving, making laws <coughs> upon people, making, making sure, trying to make sure that everybody does the same thing and accept stuff when they know it's wrong. Hello, are y'all here? Come on, let's just read. And deceive them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, mm -hmm. saying to them that dwell on the earth, that they shall make an image to the beast which has the wound by a sword and did this. Thank you. Verse 15, let me read this. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast. The beast means system. Come on, say system. system. It's a system. It's a government system. It's the things that's being made right now. You don't have no say in it. You don't have no vote in it. They just going to do it whether you like it or not. Amen. That's what this beast is. It's a system. And listen what else it says here. It says, and it's going to cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be what? Killed. Verse 16. And he causes all. Come on, say all. All. He causes all, both small and great, rich or poor, free and bond, to receive a mark where? On their right hand. Or where? Yeah. And that no man might what? Buy or what? Say. You know what that says? That says that even with the welfare system, and even on our job, unless you have that mark on your hand or on that forehead, you will not be able to buy, you will not be able to sell, you will not be able to pay bills, you will not be able to do anything unless you have that mark of the beast. But Pastor, what is that mark? Verse 18. Here is the wisdom. This is what Pastor is trying to get to. Here is the wisdom. Let him that has understanding count the number of the beast. For it is the number of man. And his number is what? Six hundred and what? Three score and what? That is six, six, six. And starting this 
make. They're going to start in European, when babies are being born, they're going to automatically, they're going to start putting the mark, that's those little microchips, in babies. And starting from Europe, and it's going to end up over here. And they're looking around about the year 2017. <coughs> Brothers and sisters, that's not too far off. Amen. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Amen. That's not too far off. And God wants us to get our house in order. Just don't, anybody see the news last night? I'm finishing. <coughs> the news last night, the White House have just announced that they have automatically accepted the marriage between same-sex marriage in all of the United States. Regardless of if the states want to accept it or not, they just made that ruling. Did anybody else see that? They just made that ruling last night. And they spoke it over the news, Brother Jackson, and said, regardless whether you like it or not, America, we have accepted it, regardless to what the preachers say, regardless to what the Bible